Here's a quick, just kind of startup uh, tutorial to get you going with GarageBand. Now, GarageBand, guys, has so many different features and so many different things that you can do with it that I could spend probably a whole semester, uh, you know, just working with GarageBand. And, um, you know, we, we just don't have time for that. So we're going to give you just kind of a short, brief tutorial here. There's some other tutorials on the website as well. Uh, but I'll give you just a short, brief tutorial here as far as adding loops and instruments to GarageBand. Now, just a reminder here that, that this is the startup screen that you'll get when you, when you get started here, okay? Now, the two things that we'll, we'll take a look at here in class briefly is, you know, as far as creating music goes, is loops, excuse me, and, um, and in, uh, software instruments. So, let's take a look at loops first. If it's not already showing over here on the side, you want to click the loops button here. And what you have here is lots of different pre-recorded um, tracks uh, of sound that you can put into your creation. So let's say, for example, I want to just put some bass in here. Okay, I'm going to, you can kind of preview it here on the side and we'll play for you. So let's say I wanted that. Okay, I'm going to just bring it over here, drag it, and drop it. And it will put it uh, into my existing track. And then if I go up here and hit play, okay, that's the loop that I have there going right now. Now if I want to extend that loop to go longer than that amount of time, I can just kind of click on the edge here and drag. It'll make it longer. Okay? So there's some different things that you can do there. Kind of play around with that. Let's say I wanted to, oh, let me get back in here real quick. Let's say I dragged it. Um, oops, sorry. There it goes. Okay? You can drag it, but then, but I, you know, I can kind of take things in and out of here as we have them as well. So kind of check those features out and, and, and see what you want to use in there. Um, as far as that goes. And you can bring over as many loops as you want. Okay, you can go crazy with it if you want to. Now, the one thing I was going to show you here, though, is that as you click on buttons, it kind of eliminates certain loops because bass is related to these sets of loops. But you notice the other ones are off. So if you want to start looking for a new sound again, I always always hit the reset button and notice that it makes more of the categories now available uh, to you. So, uh, because again, they kind of link certain categories with certain other sounds. So, piano and um, bass don't really have a lot to do with each other, so they kind of turn the bass off here in regards to piano. But if you want to be them all available, hit the reset button. And so you can bring as many of these in as you want. If you want a guitar in here, you can put that in. Um, if you want, you know, some different sounds, and you can just kind of play around with this, okay? You just kind of drag them in, okay? And then, then you know, put your guide back here to start, hit play. See what it sounds like, okay? And just play around with that stuff. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun to just kind of see what kind of creations people can come up with, okay? Now, the second thing that we have available to us, guys, are instruments. You can be able to play instruments, okay? So, in order to do that, you'll notice that by default, it actually put an instrument already in here for you, okay? So, if you want to do the classic electrical piano, okay, you can do that. Or if you double-click here, or you hit this button up here for the instrument library, we can change what this instrument is, Okay? So if you don't want that, then maybe you want, um, you know, something different, like something uh, in the strings. Maybe you want a string ensemble, okay? You can change it to that. Now, for this, with instruments, you have to do the playing. It's not pre-recorded, okay? So to able, be able to play those, um, those instruments into your uh, GarageBand creation, what you need to do is go up here to Window and Show Keyboard, okay? And the keyboard allows you to play music. Now, as I'm playing it right now, it's not recording it because I've not hit record yet. Okay? So, you have to, you can, uh, you can kind of play around with it to hear what the sounds are like. Now, I always like to go to this, this view here because I can use my keys and my, and instead of you clicking my mouse, I can use my keys and my keyboard now to do these things. Okay, to do that kind of stuff. Now, when I'm ready to put it in to my, to my, um, uh, my track that I'm making here to my music, all I have to do now is hit the record button and then start playing. So I'm going to hit record. Oop, there it goes. There we go. And notice it's recording what I'm doing here along with the rest of the, you know, tracks that I already have in there, the loops I have in there. Okay, and then when I'm done. I can just hit stop record, move it back, and see what it sounds like. Okay. My mind's gibberish, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but for those of you that are more musically inclined, you can put your own music in there with your own instruments and have some fun with that. So 
that's kind of the basis of what we're going to look at as far as music creation here with um, uh, with GarageBand goes. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can do with GarageBand, okay? And, uh, and we'll take a look at some of those in some other videos. But as far as pure music creation goes with strings and loops, um, this is, um, you know, this is a, a great place to start when using GarageBand.